we we rail on that guy on the wall all the time. Mm-hmm. Jason gets gets it all. At some point in time, you got to look at the character and the makeup of this football team, though. As good as they are physically, this is a football team. When you talk to other players, I've talked with Steve Young and I have talked about this many times. This is the ultimate front running football team. Yeah. Ultimate. Mm-hmm. Last year, remember, they played they played New Orleans, I believe, on a Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Smacked them all over the place. They had they knocked Alvin Kamara out of the game. Mm-hmm. They went in the playoffs, went out there to LA, and the Rams. Put it on them. Put them on. They had they had Leighton Van Der Esch like up on his toes, just driving yeah, them all yeah, over yeah. the place. You and I'm going, that that's not, yeah. that's not coaching. That's, right. that's not coaching. That's here. That's yeah. that's what my high school coach used to call intestinal right. fortitude. Let me, that can might can be a bit to, of a problem too with this football team. Can we get to the question team. that I wanted sure. to ask oh, you guys? Sure. You heard all the stats I read, Max. Mm-hmm. You think they're done? They were done before the season started. They were never going to win a Super what is Bowl done with mean, Jason though? Garrett. What does that they mean? can make the playoffs. Do, you think they'll win the division? I think they done, done is playoffs. they're not going to make a playoff They, run they can either. make the okay. playoffs. I think they'll make the playoffs. The, the Eagles have an easier schedule, but this is why I said when we kept saying, is this a must win for Dallas? Is this a must win for Philadelphia? I keep looking at the game at the toward the end of the season between those two. No, that's the must win for both teams. You can't, like, you know, someone's going to get upset. Someone's going to beat a team they should probably lose to. You can't tell, but that will be the must win. It's going to come down to that. That game, Dallas and Philadelphia. So, so we are think. they done? I'll tell you this: Are they done in terms of playoffs? No, but I want to say this about about because we've been talking about it. You sure. guys have brought up stuff like, um, you know, you're running the ball. Why don't you, you pay Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah. Should, that's like in chess. A lot of times, people prepare to castle. And then they want to get in a little extra move. No, no, you prepared to castle, castle. In boxing, a guy moves his head, he gets on the inside, and then he ties the guy up. No, no, you did the work to get in. Now throw yeah. the body shot. But that's really tactics we're talking about. In terms of strategy, here's the problem with the team, Stephen A., and it'll be a problem with the next coach if he doesn't do this. Jerry Jones's ego. This is a game where the players are asked to put your ego aside and work for the greater good of the yeah. team. How does a team do that when they know the owner won't do it? He won't do it. And if he continues it, so, so like, forget he this did, season. Though. He did, though. He, sa- he basically said that he's a lame duck coach at this point. But who's he going to hire next? Is it going to be a big, strong personality who's going to get the lion's share of the credit when they win? Or is it going to be a, a puppet, a Jerry Jones puppet? Well, that's, that's a fair question yeah. because yeah. the greatest success that Jerry Jones has had was with two coaches who did their thing as opposed to his thing, which is Jimmy Johnson and Bill Parcells. Here's where it gets tricky. Jerry Jones does not come out there, and I'm going to come to Jerry Jones' defense here. Jerry Jones does not come out there on Front Street and put Jason Garrett on blast for Jason Garrett doing what Jerry Jones asked him to do. He wouldn't do that. Let's, right. let, let, let's be fair to Jerry Jones in that regard. I understand, he's a, I understand he's been a problem as the GM. He's a marketing genius and a brilliant businessman. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that I talk to loves him. And in my conversations with him, I love the guy personally. I really do. But I got to tell you something. When you look at him as the GM, yeah, there's a lot to be desired. But when we judge any other GM in the league, you know what we judge them by, Max Lewis? We judge them by the talent they accumulate. And we leave the coaching to somebody else. Now, if Jerry Jones was quiet and in complete support, because I think Jerry Jones hurt himself last night. And please let me explain before you go on. Jerry Jones hurt himself last night because up until that moment, I'm saying exactly what I just said. Mm -hmm. You don't put your coach on front street if he's doing exactly what you told him to do. So clearly he's not doing what Jerry Jones told him to do. This is Jason Gary operating to the beat of his drum, and it is what it is. we all know Jerry Jones wants to be thought of as a coach, by the way. But when Jerry Jones came out yesterday and said, I'm going to stand with him, that made me say, damn, Jerry, you hurt yourself because maybe it is you now. Yeah. Maybe he is doing no, what you he, told him to do his, because his, why would you, know you flip like no, that? I, I think what's happening, though, I think it's this. You know, sometimes things cross into the realm, <coughs> cross over from the realm of professional to personal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think this is personal with yes. this. This is personal feelings getting in the way because, look, the fact that he's leaving him in power and leaving and entrusting him to develop and utilize the weapons that he's given him, the fact that he's still doing that means that Jerry – is a step above Jason as far as being the problem. Because you know what his weaknesses are. 
You've already said, I've seen too many times us be out goats. What were his comments after the New England game? He basically said, I've seen this too many times. But maybe this he thinks our... it's in the best interest of the team, though, to just let him finish the oh, season. Oh, for this year? Yeah, he so feels as though. maybe why he, he's right. flipping. We don't he's know how really he feels flipping. about Chris Richard. We don't know how he feels yeah. about anybody else in the staff and whether or not they would do anything else, do anything better than what Jason's doing. But the fact is, the fact that he has left him in power that long, yeah. he's capped the upside of his own football team. He has. And you know what? This is a business run by people. It is a business where it was much. There's only one guy who I know of who can really separate the personal from the professional at all costs at every turn. And that's the guy who's, you know, who's up there in New England. Yeah. He's the only guy who I know who can do it better than anybody. Jerry, look, they asked him yesterday after the post game. They said, the one reporter said, it seems like you have tears in your eyes. And he said, yeah. And he said, was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like. You have four games left. What are you crying for? I mean, you have four games left. Because there were there were guys that were emotional but you know in what? their locker room. I'll tell you, maybe and you know what? And that's a, it was really that's, over after that's that. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother issue. That's never worked to, either. Steve, they all I agree, yelling at Jordan. But this goes back to ego. Why did he take kind of like a hostile toward analytics position? What? Who's the most analytically oriented team in the NFL? Like you think Bill Belichick doesn't rely heavily no. on anal? Right? Okay. He's so, also great at drafting. Of course, but it all he takes all the relevant information and he makes dispassionate decisions. I know he's this guy's a sentimental favorite. He can't I can get someone cheaper to do yeah. almost the same job, right? Yeah. Why do you are you anti-analytics? Because it takes your own humanity out of it, your own ego out of it. Jerry Jones needs to believe that he can smell the oil in that ground and he kind of can sense well, 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 it. Well, you know and what? he wants well, people on, around on, him on, who are like that. On, on, on. Final first, points. First of all, with all due respect, line. don't be slick with that analytics plug right there. The fact of the matter is some people that don't rely heavily on analytics, it's not that you have a problem with analytics because it, smart people include analytics with everything. It's completely relying upon it as opposed to also, depending on what your eyes see. But what as I'm well. saying is, when yeah. Jerry right, Jones departs you know from, why, from right, a dispassionate analytic, you know, you know, you know, you know why people, you know why people will reject some objective data though, it's because it's not fun. And a lot of these owners are in it because it's fun. They like the juice. You think you don't like the cameras? All right. You think you don't like people talking about? Of course. Sometimes numbers do lie, though. Uh, Lamar Jackson has been carrying the Ravens all season, but find out why he is not the quarterback who needs a bigger game in Baltimore on Sunday. I cannot wait for this one. More first take after the break. We're back Monday with another must-see first take for reaction to the class of the Titans in Baltimore. Plus, will Deshaun get the best of the Pats defense in H-Town? And a full preview of the huge Monday night matchup between the Hawks and the Vikings. Catch it all Monday right here on First Take. Sounds like we're hosting this weekend. It's not a problem at all. 